Great. So if we can cool here with Sean from Repentance, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. I'm doing good on this lovely, wet, cold, rainy Monday in Illinois. <laughs> Yeah, we're uh, I'm in New York, man. So I'm, I'm getting a, a crazy uh, warm front here. So I'll take it while I can. Oh, that's good. Yes, for sure. Definitely a uh, late summer, right? Yeah, uh, you know, got to have something to look forward to in this uh, pandemic. Yeah, 2020 is quite a year to put out a new metal album, but uh, you know, there's been a lot of good albums coming out this year. Surprisingly, weird timing, but I don't think all of us artists planned on a pandemic to put a record out, but, you know, it happens, right? So speaking of good albums coming out, man, God for a Day is amazing. Oh, I thank you so very much. So, I very much appreciate the kind words. Like I said, man, it does have to be hard with uh, the, the pandemic being out there and deciding to put out a release. I mean, how long did you hold off before you decided to finally put it out? Uh, us and the record company kept going back and forth, like, should we wait, should we wait? And I said, you know, let's wait till the end of summer, you know, late September, you know, right around fall to do this, and, uh, you know, maybe things will start falling into place. You know, wishful thinking, but at the same time, it seems like things are a little better than they were, per se, you know, six months ago, right? So, I, uh, I mean, you know, you can't, you can't just sit on a record for so long, then it's, it's going to lose momentum, and we as a band probably would be not as excited waiting a year from now to put it out, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, 100%, man. I mean, plus, I'm sure you did a lot of recording, or at least writing during this downtime, and I mean, what are you going to do, put out back-to-back, and that's going to be yeah. on your tour, that's gonna be, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, we wanted to put out an album that, you know, has impact and get people talking. And, hey, you know, maybe in a year from now the next album does come or a new EP or a new single or something. But right now, you know, we wanted to put out this album because we're proud of it, but we know that people are listening to music. I mean, the, the average person, is they're not just stopping to listen to music because there's a pandemic, you know. So. Nah, it's a time when you need something to do, you know. I mean... Right now, the only thing that is coming out is music. There's no new movies. Uh, TV shows are putting on hold. Everything fucking sucks. At least you yeah. have music to look forward to. Absolutely. I totally fucking agree. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know I could see there, but yeah. So, yeah, I, I think that people want fucking metal, man. They, they want it. I mean, there's a lot of good albums that came out this year. I mean, I was trying to compile a top ten the other day, and I'm like, wow. I'm way over ten. Like, I, I may have to do a top twenty. So it's crazy, but you know, it, you know, we can't change the world, man. You know, all we got to do is sit in a wait like ducks. <laughs> you know, I'm looking at your Facebook show. Did you guys just play a show on the 17th, or was that something different? Yes, yes, we got off of that show like right when we were finishing the record, and I was like, guys, do you want to do the show? with our good friends Pot to Hate from Kenosha, Wisconsin, who's outdoors at this hipster bear, like really cool bear place called Arnoggin. And they had their, they've been having every summer these shows and they're getting bigger and bigger. And we're like, okay. And then all this stuff hit. And I was like talking to the promoter. I'm like, is the festival going on? They're like, as of right now, Wisconsin's open. I'm like, okay. So, you know, I told the guys, what do you guys all think? I'm like, mask up, you know, let's, let's do it. So, we get there, you know, I would say, hate to say it, I would say 90% of that crowd did not have a mask on. And it was packed outside Kenosha, Wisconsin, which is in between my house and Milwaukee. And it, it, was, it was a really good show. First time we got to play a lot of the new material in the live set. And our, our friends Proctor Hate headlined it. And it was a cool show, man. It was, you know... And it's been over two weeks now, and, you know, nobody I know from any of the bands or fans that I've talked to got sick. So, I think everybody's very lucky, you know? So, So I'm just kind of, you know, what can you do, man? I mean, people still want entertainment, and it was outdoors, you know? So, that helps. 
you know, that it, it was outside. And, you know, I think the five guys in repentance were the only ones with masks. So obviously our singer Robbie couldn't wear a mask singing on stage. So. But that's going to be a fucked up feeling to go out there and actually feel nervous that it's a packed house and no one's wearing a mask. You know, it was weird, especially, like, by the end of the set, like, the last song, like, just watching the mosh pit nonstop evolve and grow and get more and more just, and they were getting into the show, you know? It was a fucking metal show. And I was like, wow. It did cross my mind when I was on stage. Like, nobody here gives a fuck, man. <laughs> so the show, was in, the show was in Kenosha, right? Yep, Kenosha, Wisconsin, which is a really good metal scene, actually, right? Like, back in the day with my former band, I used to play there a lot. Well, I mean, you got to figure, if all those people out there writing and shit ain't got the, uh, ain't got the virus, then uh, you should be safe to do a metal show. I know, and nobody tried to shoot me, so I'm cool. No, but it was, uh, it was actually a week before that hit, before the Kenosha, you know, party, before the Rager started. <laughs> Literally... Literally a week or ten days before that shit hit the fan, and all the guys in my band, we were texting like on a group text, like, "Wow, glad the show's not this weekend." You know, like obviously it would have never happened um, because you know everything went crazy up there. But uh, but you know, a dumb cop fucking triggered another fucking goddamn you know riot. You know, it sucks. Oh, it's, it fucking sucks big time, man. I mean, I'm in New York, so uh, we're a hotbed for that kind of shit. Yeah, I heard New York's been very, very high with COVID. Obviously, you got a lot of travel, people coming in and out from all over the world to New York. It's such a, it's such a, you know, it's, it's such a mecca of travel. You know? So it's got to be kind of kind of sketchy there, you know. I can understand. So tell me a little bit more about the band. I mean, from what I'm seeing, it's, it's, it's somewhat of a super group. Uh, you know, I, I guess we never all su say a super group, but, you know, we all have past and we all have presence, I guess. But, you know, when I put the project together, I wanted something that was really just heavy. But modern, you know, I wanted something that sounds current, but yet has true to the roots old school metal to it, you know, I'm not going to hide them, you know, of Slayer and, you know, Death and stuff like that, but also have a, a fresh approach on it, but when I, when I put the band together, I just started talking to people, and the first thing it was, well, I want a second guitar player, because I really want good leads, you know, I'm primarily a rhythm guitarist songwriter, but I like having, you know, some good shredding, so a couple friends of mine told me about Marcus, and he lived near me. So I reached out to him, and he's like, I told him kind of what I'm looking to do. He's like, yeah, I'm into it. We started writing some songs together, got together, and it just started flowing. And then I'm like, all right, well, we need a drummer. So we got a local guy for a while, but he really wasn't serious or professional. So we got rid of him, and then we got Kenki that's in the band now. that used to be in Straight Line, Straight Line Stitch. And then Mike was a good friend of mine and in a couple other projects in the past. And I said, hey, you know, do you want to play bass? And he said, yeah. So then the four of us started jamming, getting songs together, and then we're like, we need a singer. So we started trying out guys locally, and we couldn't really find anybody that we thought was really that great, you know? Right. And, that, and then my buddy Rob from Nonpoint lives there. And he's like, hey, you should talk to Robbie from Stuck Mojo. And I'm like, what? He goes, yeah, he lives in Chicago. I'm like, really? I was like, well, no disrespect, but I don't need a rapper, you know? And he's like, Oh, dude, he doesn't just rap. He's like, that's all he does in Suck Mojo mainly. Primor you know, primarily in Suck Mojo, he raps. He does some heavy, heavy vocals too, but... So I reached out to him and told him what, you know, the style and what I'm looking for. And he said, yeah, man, I'd love to check out the gig, you know. So he tried out for the band, came to a rehearsal after hearing some raw demos. And uh, came to rehearsal. We had like three or four songs with the band down. And he just killed it, and we're like, all right, he, you know, he lives here, which is really important. I didn't want, I didn't want members that weren't in the same area. I mean, we all do live a little far apart, but like, you know, if you get in a car and get to each other's house in 45 minutes, you know, so which is nice. But, you know, I really wanted a singer that 
looked like a front man, had some experience, wasn't completely green, knew, you know, what's what kind of style of music we are, you know, like to understand to write cool lyrics and, you know, have a good understanding of the genre of metal we are, you know. So it, he fit right in then, and there we are. We made an album, Artist War Records. It's a cool new upstart label. They Bleed the Sky and Skin Lab and Eye of the Enemy from Australia, which is a killer band. And uh, they said, hey, you guys, you know, we like the demos. Let's work something out. So cool. Here we are. And we put out God for a day. I mean, you know, if you didn't do the research, you would have never guessed that it was the fucking Stuck Mojo dude singing for you guys. 100% agree. Because it's polar opposite of what he does to Stuck Mojo. But he's only on the last Stuck Mojo album, which is about, I think it's about three or four years ago. He's not an original member. So they, he's on the later era of Stuck Mojo. So what's the plan, man? I mean, the album's out. Are we going to see some videos, or what are you, what are you guys going to do? Yeah, we're probably going to shoot a video when we can all figure out some stuff, and we can get together again soon. But right now, we uh, we have a couple shows offered in the Midwest in December that we're looking at doing. And then after that, you know, let's hope this magic vaccine comes and uh, a rainbow flies over the world, you know. And uh, just wait, you know. All we can do is kind of wait right now, you know, and until things kind of fall into place, but we can't change the world, you know, but we're waiting patiently as the rest of everybody is to get back to some sort of normality and people to go to a safe environment and enjoy some fucking metal, you know. Tell me how fucked up that's got to be when you're sitting there trying to figure out dates and you got to look at the news to see uh, what the COVID rate is there or what the fucking riot rate is yeah. there at that time. Yeah. Very bizarre world we're in, my friend. But, you know, yeah, even the same thing when we did the Kenosha show, all of a sudden there was, like, my drummer's like, hey, I'm hearing that if we leave Illinois, we could get a ticket. We're leaving Illinois to go across over Wisconsin border, which is only like an hour from us, you know? And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Like, there's a risk that we can't play the show because of getting a, a ticket or crossing a border. I mean, that's just crazy, you know? Oh, it's a hundred percent crazy, man. I mean, like each state's having its own rules and what regulations fucks everything up for everybody. Right, right, right. Like touring's gonna be a nightmare when you're gonna try and figure out some actual routing when you want to do a full show, you know, full tour. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I I can't even begin to think of you know, especially bands from Europe that want to come over here. I mean. Imagine being a European metal band or U.S. metal bands. We can't even cross. We can't cross. We can't go into, you know, we can't we can't fly. I can't go to England. England, British bands can't come here. A German band can't come here. Bands from here can't go to Europe. It's it's really bizarre, man. Dude, I'm, where I'm at in New York, I, I can literally throw a rock and hit Canada, but you're not allowed to cross the border, you know what I mean? Going back and forth that close. Uh, it's so sad, you know. It's like it's such a mess. The economy is really screwed up, and you know, the worst part about all this is when people start turning into conspiracy theories, pulling the whole political thing, and it's like, you know, a virus isn't a politician. <laughs> you know, it's reality. How this came or what it's from, who knows? You know, me myself, I'm not buying that it came from some. Idiot eating a bat? Sorry, I just don't believe that. But hey, teach their own, you know. Maybe that is true. I'm not a, you know, I'm no genius psychic. I don't know. I can't read people's minds. But I do know this, that, you know, people need to stay healthy, be smart, and, you know, be considerate of your fellow human beings. That's all we can do, right? You know, 100%, man. I, I don't know about that bad shit either, man. I've been to uh, plenty of different Chinatowns, and they eat fucking gross shit there every day. <laughs> now, you know, like, a, it wasn't the first bat that someone put across their lips over there. So, I, I, I just find it hard to believe, man, you know? I mean, who would have thought, though? You know, I mean, 
knowing that all this, the whole world literally shut down. You can't do shit. I mean, I, masks, you gotta wear fucking every place that you go to. I I go extra. I put on gloves, because who knows? People are disgusting. Yeah, and, and, and I need to say it, because you are in New York, there's a huge risk factor there. Where I live, I'm not in Chicago proper, so it is a little, quote-unquote, keep my fingers crossed, safe, you know, but you know, all we can do is, you know, wash your hands, mask up, don't make out with any strangers. You'd be all right. <laughs> I mean, that's the that's the one drawback, you know, no making out with strangers. You just got to take them from behind and send them on their way. Yeah, I'm sure Tinder's not really popular right now. <laughs> So you mentioned that you had plans for uh, doing a video. What's going to be the first uh, single that you're going to use for a video? You know, I'm not sure. We haven't discussed it with the record company yet of what song we're going to go for. But it seems, I will say this, early on, the album only came out Friday. But it does seem like a lot of favoritism is definitely going to the track Clarity. So, you know, maybe it's that or one of our favorites as a band is Snake Oil Humanitarian. So... I don't know. I mean, when the time comes, you know, when the time comes, we will assess. But, you know, obviously it's going to be hard because we like every song on the record, you know, especially as a band in our debut album, you know, like everybody, it's hard, you know, because everyone loves every song. You know, it's got to be uh, hard for a band that's fucking brutal as fuck to go and think about shows and shit like that when you know that some places might be social distance or they might want you to sit in chairs or do something fucking weird at the concert. Yeah, it'd be kind of anticlimactic to have everybody, you like playing it at an old folks home where everyone's in wheelchairs, you know, sipping soup while you're playing the most brutal riff in the world. <laughs> I don't know, man. We, we shall wait and see. I mean, hey, we're only in September. If we start doing shows in, before the new year, we'll wait and see and see what happens, you know? Now, when, you, when you're going towards the new year, are you doing what most bands are doing and just starting to try and book what you can because you, you don't know if it's going to be open, but you definitely want to have those dates locked down? Yeah, pretty much, man. You just got to, you know, kind of keep your fingers crossed. And if it happens, cool. And if, it's, if it makes sense and it's safe, but... Yeah, you know, I mean, I see a lot of bands booking tours way ahead in advance, but I think some of them are jumping the gun, you know. Well, you know, I mean, it's I can, I can see locking down just because you're worried that all these other bands are going to want to go to that venue, and, you know, there's a lot of places closing. A lot of the bigger places aren't going to be able to open up because they're too big. So yeah. you're looking at certain shit, but as far as selling tickets and shit, God, that's a hard uh, thing to figure out, man. I mean... I have some bands. Yeah. That, I have some bands that's gonna be a fucking refund yet, and I know that shit ain't happening. <laughs> it's just like I want my money. Yeah, of course. I think some. I think some people. I mean, a, a lot of it is booking agents also trying to figure out that they get the confirmed date at the venue because there's going to be so much traffic and so much competition to lock in tour dates. So I think a large part is that you know, like. Are, are we going to be able to get that weekend open? Because there's going to be about 500 bands trying to get that exact weekend open. And that's that's probably a large part of why a lot of these venues are starting to book shows, you know, with hope that they can push it through and make it happen. But no one knows, you know. It's, it's like being in Las Vegas, man. Just pull a slot. <laughs> You know, I'm taking a look at your uh, Facebook page here, and I'm seeing a lot of cool merch, man. Where do uh, where do the fans go to pick that shit up? You can just type in uh, Bandcamp, do a search on Bandcamp, Repentance, and you will be able to find, uh, I think we have three items up right now, and obviously CDs. You can buy our CD from ArtistWarRecords.com, Amazon.com, or iTunes, you can get the digital version there and, you know, support the band and we appreciate everyone that, you know, puts their hard-earned money into supporting a band like us, you know, so we're, we're stoked, I mean, it's, it's cool for us because we're a new band, but 
you know, we're just happy that, you know, people are taking the time out of their day to check out Repentance. Now, being a new band and being not able to tour to get the music out and shit, I mean, what are you, what are you guys doing to, to push it across to the to pick up new fans? So, it is largely social media, man. It's We're pushing it on all our personal pages, our band pages. Other bands are promoting us. I mean, the guys in Trivium, Dino from Fear Factory, like, it's great to see, like, so many cool bands promoting and, you know, waving the flag saying they dig, dig the album, you know, so... We're, we're very lucky with that, and uh, it's just cool to see that people are, are digging the record. Like you said, you love it, and that's just awesome. So right now, you know, the main thing is, you know, get that music out there, let people know. Hopefully you tell a friend, they tell a friend, and the word gets out. I mean, isn't that what we did when we were kids, you know? I mean, that's what how you did it. You, you made tapes for your friends, and told your friends, get that new creator album or that new Metallica record or whatever. And that's really the best thing, I think, still. Like, no matter what, you know, you could put a billboard of your band downtown Chicago. It doesn't even matter. No one, you know, everyone that passes doesn't even listen to metal. The main thing is that, you know, friends that are in the community hear it from their, a voice that they believe in, you know. And that's what, that's how, that's how people get to find new bands. That's that's how I discover new bands in magazines and, you know, the internet, you know, stuff like that. So, so the people want to know more about the band. They want to get the album. They want to, you know, shoot the shit with you guys, whatever. I mean, where, where do they go? What do they do? Yep. Everything is at repentanceband.com. www.repentanceband.com. Everything you need is there. That'll give you the links to all the social media shit. I'm sure you guys are on Facebook and Twitter and all that bullshit. Of course. Everything is there, man. There's everything everything you need to do is on repentanceband.com and all the links are right there towards anything you need about repentance. Awesome. So, all right, man. I enjoyed speaking with you today. Like I said, I love the album. Uh, hopefully, one of these days, you know, the fucking world's going to open back up. We'll get to shoot the shit in person, check out the show. Awesome, man. Well, we appreciate everyone checking the album out, and you especially. Thanks for having me on your show and on your mag and on your site. And, uh, you know, can't, can't, can't say it enough. Thank you so much for the kind words and support and Let's all fucking get through this together and get back to being uh, a strong heavy metal community. Definitely, man. Awesome, brother. Well, thanks for uh, chit chat. You know, it was good talking with you. I mean, like I said, I, I can't wait to see what's next from the band. Like, I, I love what I heard so far. I, I can't wait to awesome. see the video, see a live show, hopefully. Cool. And let Shauna know we had a good chat and everything's good. Perfect, man. All right, man. Have thanks, a good one. Great, you too, brother. Have a great day.